Hello, I'm JW. Today we have another water heater to have a look at, and it's supplied in this crackly plastic packaging. And it's one of these jobs you're supposed to put in a cup of coffee or something similar to uh, heat it up. Now, unlike the previous one we've seen, this is supposed to be a bit safer because it has an enclosed element. However, the point is it might not be safe at all, and even if it is, it's still going to end up being destroyed anyway. Now, as is usual with these things, it comes directly from China, it only costs a couple of dollars, and uh, here's the packaging. It has uh, all of uh, its writing on the back here. And we can see the uh, name at the top here, again, in sort of partially in English, but uh, mostly it isn't. And the thing itself is in this thing here. And as you can see, it's basically just a heating element, just sort of twisted uh, around in that fashion there. Goes directly into this uh, rather badly moulded plastic piece here, a couple of Chinese type characters on it. And then we have this very thin looking flex here. This can't be more than 0.5 millimetres, uh, probably even smaller. And then this uh, two prong device on the end here to shove into the socket. Now this is supposed to be a 220 volt item. And in theory, this is just a uh, outer covering here. And the heating element inside, of course, is isolated from that. So uh, even if you grabbed hold of this, you're not going to get a shock from it. Although, of course, if you grab hold of it, it's on. It's going to be rather hot and you're going to burn your fingers. Now, notice no earth connection on this. If this was an approved item for use in the UK and other normal countries, then it would have a three-prong plug, and the outer covering of this would, of course, be connected to the earth pin, so that if any kind of fault occurs inside, the element would short onto the casing. That would blow the fuse or trip the circuit breaker. But in this case, it's just a two-prong deal, so in the end of any fault, it's just going to be live and therefore kill people. So let's just do a couple of basic tests on this first, see if it's even uh, credible for use. Now, first of all, just check the resistance of the heating element. So we'll just take the uh, testing probes here, and we'll just connect to the two prongs in a fashion like that. And uh, resistance is showing about 80 ohms, so that's certainly within the realms of credibility. That's uh, certainly not a uh, short circuit, and also it's at least got some kind of resistance, so it will at least heat up. Now, we'll also check the insulation resistance between the prong here and the actual casing of the thing here. Uh, we only have to do this really on one of them because, uh, as we've just seen, there's an 80 ohm resistance between the uh, two prongs there. Now we should expect uh, many megams here. We're going to use the uh, 1000 volt uh, range here you know, because it's what we can use. So let's see what we get. 4.5 megohms, that's a pass, but it's pretty poor, you would expect in the many uh, tens at least, or preferably in the many hundreds for a brand new item. Let's try that at the 500 level, and again it's pretty much the same result there, just get the extra decimal point there. So uh, 4.5 megohms is uh, say certainly a pass, but it's certainly not in the realms of uh, what you'd expect from a new piece of equipment. So uh, there we have it. So in theory this can be used, so uh, Let's now uh, plug it into the mains and see if it actually heats up. So just a quick test, see if it actually heats up. So I've got some water here, just got the heater shoved in there with the uh, metal parts completely under the water. No salt in it today, but uh, that may have one later. And because this is a Chinese plug, it actually plugs straight into the back of this device. And this will show us what the uh, actual power is actually like. So let's just uh, switch on. So we can see here the uh, voltage today is about 227, so it's a bit lower than it has been at certain times in the past. You can hear the thing is certainly doing some kind of heating up. Power factor of 1 of course, because it's just a uh, resistive heater. And power is about 650 watts, which uh, certainly will heat up the water relatively quickly. Now we'll leave this going for a moment or three and see where it gets to, but uh, so far at the moment it seems to be working just as you'd expect. So current in the region of sort of 2.9 amps or so. I'd say about 650 watts going in there. So here's a just look inside the container. I can see there the uh, bubbles forming around the element as the water heats up, and uh, certainly does uh, a bit of warmth coming off of there. Of course, nothing much at the moment. Now I've got to the stage where the water is uh, pretty much boiling there, so it does obviously heat up correctly. However, the time taken, we're already well into the eighth minute here, so uh, it's a pretty slow method of uh, heating things up. We'll just uh, turn that off now. So uh, yes, it does work, but uh, say this is a fairly small container of water here, and so that was an eight minutes plus to uh, get it up to anywhere near 
your boiling point. So uh, certainly not a very uh, quick method of doing it. And if that's all you had though, I mean, I suppose that would be uh, certainly better than nothing. The water hasn't gone a disgusting shade of brown or whatever, unlike in the uh, previous one we saw. And of course that's because it's not pulling the current directly through the water. The flex at the end here is incredibly bendy and flexible. And the, uh, yeah, the bit here as well is uh, obviously softened up from the heat as well. So yes, it does work. And as you can see there, it's still in a uh, reasonable condition. Maybe a bit of uh, scale formed on there, because obviously this is hard water we were boiling up. Now while it's in its heated state, obviously it's sort of near boiling point there, we'll just check that uh, insulation resistance again. So as before, we'll just connect up to one of the leads there with the uh, point there, and then we'll connect obviously to the outer casing of the thing here. Now in theory this should be the same, so let's just see, let's go to the uh, 500 volts as we had before. Now as you can see there, that is massively impaired, that's actually 0.1 megohm, so that is actually a big fail. So generally you want to see in the region of sort of 1 megohm at least. Let's try that on the 1000 volt range. Yep, and again we're getting 0.1 megohm, so this has degraded significantly just from that uh, 7 or 8 minutes of heating there. That really is a load of old crap, isn't it? Let's just check the uh, resistance between the two prongs there. Again, that should be pretty much in the same area. Yeah, sort of 89. It's a bit difficult to get onto the uh, leads with these large probes here. But yeah, sort of 85 odd ohms as we had before, but uh, certainly the insulation resistance is significantly down. Uh, let's say if we just connect to, uh, let's try that again on the 1000 volt range. Yeah, again it's 0.1 mega ohms, so that is actually a fail. And uh, yeah, even at the 250 volts it's still on that uh, very low reading. In fact, can we even get a resistance reading there? No, it's high enough to not go on the uh, low resistance scale, but certainly, uh, say on that 500 volt range, it's uh, in the region of 0.1 mega ohms. So this is now a failed item and in theory should not be used anymore because uh, 0.1 is actually far too low and that suggests that moisture has got in there somehow between the outer and inner casing or that the uh, thing is sort of deformed inside somehow and now we've got a uh, fairly low resistance between the actual main input and the casing of this device. Now just to replace the hot water there with some new cold water, and it's been in the cold water for a few minutes, so now it is baked to basically cold as it was before. So let's uh, just turn that on again, and we'll see what the resistance we get this time is. So yeah, we're still on the prongs are there, so just place that there and see what we get. So that's only about 0.3 mega ohm, so that's certainly improved from the 0.1 or something we had when it was hot. Again, 0.3 is still a fail, and so we're looking for something in the region of 1 plus, and even 1 plus would still be uh, highly marginal. We'd really want something in the tens at the very least. And again, on the 1000 volt range, yeah, the 0.3 pretty much as we had before. And note that it's only putting out about 500 volts um, into that because it's uh, limiting the voltage inside because the actual uh, resistance is so low. So it's still, yeah, 3 or 0.3 or 0.4, so on the 500 scale, yeah, 0.3 or in the region of 0.4 if you round it up. So that's another water heater. Reasonable to start with. Yes, it does heat up the water. But unfortunately, after heating up the water once, it then uh, fails because the insulation resistance between the casing and the actual mains has already degraded to a point way beyond the point it's actually considered unsafe. So uh, heat it up once, but really it's a one-time deal something that's not recommended at all. Now that's it for this time. Uh, later of course we may uh, destroy this and uh, blow it up in some other fashion because clearly it's no good for heating water anymore. But until then, thanks for watching.